Вітання з українського Greetings from Ukraine Crisis Media Center. In cooperation with the center, you say Dobre program organized this expert discussion, the topic community recovery and development. How can we establish modern public spaces and communities? So in the period of recovery planning, well, when, when we actually plan that, it's the time to talk. Why these public spaces are important? It's about investing in communities. These activate business and cultural activity, increasing the comfort, and these are shaping the potential for local economy to flourish. In the community, it's nice to live and work. In those places, it's nice to live and work, where they take care of public spaces. More people concentrate this. What is more valuable than human capital? Nothing. So. If you remember, before we started reform of locals of governance, um, only big cities, like, even thought of public space concept, and villages and small towns, they, like, hate, had no budgets to develop their territories, and uh, public activism was not uh, expanding that hard. So the experience of communities to create those public spaces is not that vast and broad, but it's not about committees partnering the Dobra program. So... We'll talk about joint projects to launch those public spaces. From what I've seen personally, those public spaces established with the support of USA Dobre program, these are a synonym of quality of life in communities at local level. We'll talk today with experts on step-by-step -step instruction, how to establish public spaces. We'll meet the tools used by Dobre program to plan those spaces. There's a whole manual actually for it. And we will even talk about state policy for settlement, for settlement development shaped by Ministry of Infrastructure. In each program project action, we have specific people backing it, you know, like people who make decisions, decision makers, those who are responsible for it. And I do think that Dobra program is really lucky with decision makers. So. Uh, because we have so many successful projects implemented like in various sectors of community life. So it's my pleasure to pass the floor to Brian Campbell, head of You Say Dobre program. Thank you so much and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we mentioned previously, our partners, communities, uh, They inform us that they really want to plan and work uh, with further development and they want to improve the life in their uh, settlements. So despite the challenges, despite the challenges that they are facing today, communities are very decisive and confident and determined about their future and they're preparing for future. So in Dobra program, we really want, we aspire to support that. And um, this is reflected in uh, so many areas of our cooperation with communities. Dobra program played a crucial role, a leading role, I'd say, in establishment and drafting of the methodology and designing the comprehensive programs for territorial recovery. So we helped 18 communities to draft programs, recovery programs, and we try to scale up the support to other communities as well. We use the designed recovery programs to ensure that we provide direct support to communities, to ensure they provide services to citizens. As it can, as we can see today, when we start this event, we also help our partners, our partnering communities, for them to establish various public spaces. And uh, we truly do understand and recognize that today in Ukraine, we have certain uh, disputes on how should communities spend their money during the crisis, during the current crisis. And uh, it's not for us to decide, of course, but we're pretty sure that someday communities will pay their full attention to creation of better future for their citizens. And uh, taking that into consideration, we are 
actually preparing those uh preparing the advice and support thank you brian thank you and big big thank you for your truly ukrainian spirit you've been in ukraine for like uh, three years and uh you're actually doing so well with the language you've mastered that okay so we talk about the tools and how to plan open public spaces uh tools used by you say dobra program who will be the beneficiary of that manual who can use it actually by the way, I'd like now Vitaly Yurkiv, local economic development expert of You Say Dobre program. I pass the floor to him, please. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, the manual, uh, I was engaged in drafting of that manual and many of my colleagues as well. Uh, it is created for those who want to improve the spaces, existing spaces and communities. We speak about open spaces. Uh, in this case, and uh, for all those who really want to help to plan it properly, like the future sp spaces, how they should look like. So let's say that uh, manual for local authorities, for technical assistance representatives, for donors, for all of those who actually are implementing the projects, just for activists, active people in the communities who want to see their communities uh, with high quality services where they want to spend time, make it convenient and comfortable. And I just want to give you two examples, okay? Uh, from my experience, personal experience. One community, regional type, recently I visited that. I will not give you the, the name of it, okay? But I was walking uh, past the small, central square and the town it looks very well the pavement you know concrete you know fir trees and stairs and like something looks like art in the in the in the center and i said like oh the square looks so fine and local lady heard me and says like yeah it looks at first glance it's okay but it's not convenient everything is in concrete it's it's paved no benches and these fir trees they give no shadow when it's hot in summer. So, yeah. And the other example. The community from the U.S. Uh, was looking for a place to establish a market, a farmer's market like that. And they've uh, put it in one place initially. Uh, the sellers did not want to go there. Then they relocated it against some problems where buyers did not want to go there. It was not convenient. There was no parking lot. For three times, the committee was like putting it here and there, you know, the, the market, relocating it to find the balance of interest, like for those who will use the market. Um, yeah. So from the standpoint of our program, we tried uh, to pilot those projects in the communities where we worked. These, let's say, the, the, the most popular projects on the program, uh, spatial planning and design and with the help of our authors and consultants created this manual where we tried with simple plain language you know just to describe how should the process look like for that space to be established you'll you'll hear the details you'll know about the chapters just a couple words from me on the key blocks yeah so communities who want to create spaces or to improve these. Engage consultants and experts, please. Don't just think that you can do it on your own. Yeah, maybe in your community you have wonderful people, architects, designers, yeah. But give a chance to those working in a team with engaged experts, yeah. Plan your budgets for the consultants uh, or search for resources if someone can give you the, the consultants. Okay, second thing, before you buy, bricks, concrete, whatever, plan the design, plan the space, okay? Ideally, you will find a chance simultaneously with a team of designers and urban experts to have those working who uh, create the budget plans for projects. You'll have the synergy, okay, between these two teams. Third thing, don't forget uh, the project that you're handling prioritize this as a community document or strategy, a development strategy or the economic development program, whatever. It must be a document. This project must be officially endorsed by your local council 
for this project to be official and legitimate as a priority. And then you'll have more chances to find resources to support that. Okay? Thank you so much. Yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, Vitaly, thank you. You've uh, mentioned many things, but uh, we'll put it like uh, to the very end for q and I read a lot when I was preparing, and I have loads and loads of questions hoarding in my head. Uh, I still have no answers, but we have architects, urban experts, and we discuss the step-by-step -step instruction to establish public spaces. Anastasia Hulavata, public space, con space consultant, architect, urban expert, and manual co-author. Okay. Anastasia, please. Greetings. I'm so pleased to meet you. Can I have my presentation? Yeah, sure. Great, thank you. So again, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. My big thank you to everyone who is watching us in the stream as well. Me and my colleague, Sophia, will tell you about our manual in details. So she will join me online. I mean, Sophia, a little bit later. As Vitaly said, this, this is not a book like... Uh, this is not a textbook on design. So we tried to create a guideline, an algorithm for all of those who will relate to public space designing. This may be uh, representatives of administration, of public. This had to become a document that can be taken not only by experts like architects, urban experts, but anyone who is engaged in uh, planning and designing at least to understand where one is missing the expertise and how to engage people at different levels and to understand the whole project cycle if what should one take into account at which step. And this document will be useful also for our colleagues because it accumulated all the information like uh, very well analyzed and it's compiled in really a step-by-step -step guideline just to make it convenient, user-friendly. Okay, a little bit about us, who we are, the team of authors. Uh, my name is Anastasia Hulevata. Before the full-scale invasion, I was an architect, an urban expert, and uh, I have a specialized degree, and the second one is construction and engineering. And Polishuk, uh, Sofia Polishuk, she is the is a public space and urban space researcher, urban expert and designer. And we work together to create this product, let's call it like this. And a couple of words on how, what was our approach actually, what this product is based on. So together, in our portfolio, we work together with so many projects, starting from the concept of spatial development, the urban projects, how to activate the urban spaces, in general of the urban planning strategy, uh, public space concept specific ones, some linear, you know, big items, big spaces like parks, and to the tiny targeted ones like small spaces that activate certain zone. Also, uh, private architects practice, interior design and uh, such projects which are more relevant to our today's topic. Public spaces, external and internal, building Ukraine together. We will have a speaker presenting this project giving us some more details. We worked with them in synergy in various projects. From the public spaces to more social projects, we had uh, the project of dorm rearranging, institutes dorm rearranging for IDPs. Uh, these were different projects, yeah. Also a project of medical education development for student spaces. We helped to rearrange student spaces. Uh, this is like a type of social space, but quite specific, you know? So uh, we had to be, we had to carry out specific analysis and to work with that type of space and specific beneficiaries, let's say. 
Of course, you say Dobre project. We've been cooperating for years already, and uh, we're so grateful for the opportunity to have these really valuable contributions. And it's so good to have such wonderful long-term uh, partners. It's not just one project, but this is truly a huge experience with public spaces, the manual we've generated, and even now we're still working. We have three public space projects implemented in three communities. We already passed the stage of concept. Soon we will show the result. Just uh, in a couple of months, we'll show you three full concepts. IREX project also. 12 projects of youth uh, public centers all around Ukraine. Yeah, with that really diverse portfolio, <clears throat> with various specificity and various uh, concepts, we've uh, established some base where we managed to systematize and analyze our experience, and we used our knowledge, we used our degrees, we used our expertise. The studies that we ha that we carried out to create the manual, so. We picked some regions where we had additional analysis carried out, where we studied thoroughly using our own experience, me and Sophia's, and uh, uh, the years of, of partnership with Yusei Dobre. We merged that all together, and it actually became the foundation for the manual. And I actually wanted to pass the floor to you right now, yeah. Thank you so much. Greetings. I just want... Yeah, Miss Sofia, I want to introduce you first. Sofia Polishchuk, public space consultant, urban expert, designer, and also a manual co-author that we're actually talking about. Okay, so we're listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. I want you just to add uh, that uh, we took this background and we had it thanks to the strong synergy. And uh, the synergy helped us to create this big artifact the manual. I can say that I'm proud of it because it contains our experience, our expertise, our findings, the key theory, and uh, it's presented in such a wonderful manner, you know, in, in very simple and, and plain language again for people to understand. Just before I introduce the manual itself, I want to mention a couple of things about the cooperation with you say Dobre program. As Anastasia mentioned, uh, for so many years we've been working with them as consultants uh, on public space establishment and design. So we had three interesting outputs out of that partnership and maybe important conclusions we'd like to share, which became the foundation for the manual first conclusion is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. There is no one single solution. And if someone says that it exists, that there is like one set of tools or one set of items or objects you need to have in public space, no, it won't work. It won't be successful. It doesn't exist. There's just a unified framework of the project. Experts and consultants can move in a specific direction with that framework in a productive way, but it's just a general framework, okay? And uh, every project, you know, has its own personality, let's say, yeah? Every project is unique and different contexts, different nuances are there. It's important to engage specialists, you know, at that level because... Geographical conditions, just the natural landscape, cultural, architectural, historical heritage, economic environment, you know, certain location, social context. It actually uh, affects the process and how you design the space, um, how you shape the space. And uh, of course, we have pandemics, we have the war in Ukraine, so even small things like even the uh, volume of the team, those who are ready to work with this case, the, the team itself is even impacting the methodology. Therefore, 
Please engage experts, engage people who know how to do this. Those who will respond to any nuances and changes and will adapt it specifically to a context. May I have the next slide? I just want to tell you the next thing. The, imp the key approach that we used during work and we integrated in the book is cooperation with communities and joint placemaking. This is important. The communication itself with people is important. You need to have working groups, communicate with stakeholders. Uh, we have also to focus on community. It's not done in vacuum. We did not make design for the sake of design. It's for people. So. Our successful cases, like Vitaly mentioned, by the way, in the book, the perfect case is when local materials or products are accessible, when we use it for the public space in a certain region, maybe a public garden where children from this local school take care of it, or some flower beds, you know, where locals just take take care of that, you know? What we create with the community together, it must be used and maintained by the community for this to be uh, activated, for this to be, uh, for this to live, you know? Be viable. Another important thing, uh, it'll be the next slide. Uh, we've been working with you, say, Dobra program, and we now definitely feel that our projects come to a higher level. And we can conclude that it's necessary, It's and it's really important when we shape the public spaces, when we uh, design those spaces. It's not just important to have the budget plans, the general plans, you know, for the project to be introduced, but also we have to give the video of architectural concepts. Since 2022, we've established these, like, we, we now add these additional files for each community. Video actually helps to visualize it better, you know? And uh, for citizens, it increases the awareness. People understand what will be built, you know? in their place and it helps uh, to make it more attractive and more clear for potential investors to make sure that you not only take the money from local budget but from additional sources like donors grants whatever private investors and uh, we also realize that it's really important to pay attention and uh, to stress on implementation as the last step of the work we also offer the file with the stage-by-stage -stage, uh, construction and establishment of the space. And these detailed schemes for people to make it clear, you know? For project development actually to be finalized, you know, because uh, definitely public spaces, these are bigger potential projects that can last for years. How to reach the, f the, 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 the final stage, not to get frozen in the middle, you know, just to have everything you've planned there in the concept to reach everything. That's why we add these materials. And uh, for the book itself, the next slide, is, is the manual itself. So everything we had, we packed it, let's say, in the book, in the manual, how to establish a public space. And yeah, uh, this is not just a book. It's a step-by-step -step guideline or instruction. It will be useful for so many people, as Vitaly mentioned. It's You don't have to read it from the first to the last letter. Uh, it's useful in many aspects. You can use it as an instruction. You can start using it from the middle, just uh, checking the algorithms of actions. You can uh, uh, search for some ideas there, meaning the, the visual elements, or start reading from the end. <laughs> and Anastasia will tell us about the content, and you understand that 
these blocks, uh, you can actually change the sequence. Just how you want that to have it, okay? Okay, nice step, please. Yeah, now the mic is in my hand again. Okay, so details about the manual. First, about the chapter of the manual, which is the album of solutions, project solutions from Dobre. And we took all the projects of public spaces established uh, as of 2022, so many of them, almost like 40 in this specific area. So we realized that we can't show all of them. It doesn't make sense even. And we have to analyze and systematize. So we've uh, checked that all, checked the details of all the projects, split those in categories, into types, and we picked 12, which are in the manual on the album. This second part of Ukraine, these are the 12 projects. They cover a vast geography, you can see. They show us various contexts, geographical, climatic, uh, cultural, and so on. Also, various projects based on its type. In the end of the book, the last this is the last block, you can check these 12 projects, as I, as Sophia told, to many, maybe get inspired with some ideas. Uh, and you can see what is so specific in each type of projects. Also, these 12 projects, these are not the only Dobre projects that we showed in the manual. These visualize and illustrate certain uh, blocks or areas. If project fits this block or area, we show with Dobre how can it be put in practice. Okay, so that's how it looks in the book. This is just where the pages, we can even see the photos there in the upper part. You can just understand what we talk about there. So the key schemes are there, maybe some general plan or zoning to understand how it works. And some text that describes uh, briefly the key messages. Yeah. It's for the projects. The content itself is split into parts, into chapters. The first is theoretical. It's quite a specific sector of life. I mean, architecture and urban development. So there are key definitions that you have to understand to work with this. Or if something is unclear, you can always go back to theory, read it carefully, and understand it finally. OK, then we have uh, the project cycle chapter. Uh, periodicity and uh, the step-by-step -step approach, the sequence itself. If we decide to work with public space, what should we do? Then just a couple of blocks that we wanted to put in the manual. Sustainable development, inclusiveness, and environmental development. So it, it should be there. In any project, uh, these things are crucial. A separate chapter is participatory uh, component. This is important. Part of every project, as Sophia said, it's not designed for the sake of design, but it should be for people. You just have to engage uh, citizens and uh, implement projects in cooperation, not to put it from top to bottom, you know, and. Uh, oppress people that just saying like use this because we decide this we're experts we know how to do it we know how it should be done experts are great people but uh, they never know all the needs all the actual needs and demands at full extent and uh, the actual user the actual beneficiary knows it better uh, another block for advice at the word time because um it changed a lot. So the current situation, it's changed all parts of our life, urban design as well. Even if projects are very far from the front line, mm, still, uh, we have to take into account the, the, the current reality. And of course, we have to pay attention to materials, the quality, especially the safety issues. So if we take the structure of the manual we tried to make it user-friendly we'll say reader-friendly and uh, all 
texts are put in infographics and schemes to visualize it at maximum point, not read like 10 pages to understand one specific issue. It's, it's more of a guideline instruction. Just open it and to understand where we are at which stage, what I want to aspire or achieve, like what should be there. Okay, the key part of the book is um, the description of the algorithm or the project cycle. We all the time stress that it's not just project, it's not just a set of drawings. It cannot exist in vacuum, it cannot exist just per se for the sake of itself. It's just a part of big work. Always preceded, usually preceded by analysis and study stage in each project. It's always there first. Searching for concepts, various strategies of development. Finalizing the concept. Then project stage. So here we uh, have all the financial documents drafted, the budget plan and so on. Always, you have to consider two stages after the project implementation and uh, actual use. If this is ignored, the best project solutions will just be kept on paper. And that's all. These may be unrealistic or absolutely not practicable. Or even if implemented, these may not be functional and effective. And these may even become a problem eventually. Uh, instead of giving no value. Poorly designed projects or poorly implemented projects may be a burden on the neck and shoulders of uh, locals. It's a high cost of maintenance and use, uh, not activating the economic development, but becoming, but hampering the economic development. And at the stage of concept, at the stage of analysis, we have to think uh, strategically, we have to keep this full picture in front of us. Okay, this solution is there. Like, which impact will it give in two, five, ten years? How community will be able to take care of the object, repair the object, and so on, and maintain the object? Anastasia mentioned that apart from this part of algorithm, we also cover important blocks and uh, modern approaches, engaging people, engaging citizens, participation, I mean. Of course, environmental issues, sustainable development, war impact, and inclusiveness. So we give examples. We give international cases as examples, and we search for those examples. Uh, meaning Ukrainian domestic ones. The next slide. Of course, it's not only our achievement, not only us who bring the knowledge. Of course, we have we have a whole community of colleagues supporting us. And in our manual, we gave references to other materials and other sources, of course. Um, the manual from Ukrainian urban experts Urbanina, Big City Lab, uh, Zemlya. Also, we collected some useful information for uh, for which may be useful for public spaces. Manuals created uh, with the help of Yusei Dobre on strategy and funding and. Uh, we collected some useful materials, results of the studies made by foreign experts as well. Just a little bit about the design. Last year, we started working on uh, the book design, and uh, we just want to show off a little bit. OK, so we managed to engage, we, we, to use the uh, tech experts as well with some really innovative solutions like uh, neural networks. And uh, these illustrations, for example, it was generated by a neural network, DALI. And uh, 
Another interesting and nice fact, we wanted to leave something interesting in the book, some interesting reference. Use the font of Mariupol, a national uh, art museum of Ukraine in the book, yeah. Okay, so we were really glad to introduce the book and we are so glad that we have this wonderful cooperation with the You Say Dobre program. I'm grateful to Vitaly Yurkiv. He is our curator. He helped us a lot and thank you for promoting this activity. And we're grateful to the half of uh, the program employees and all the consultants and experts that we managed to communicate. We've uh, processed all the cases that uh, you say Dobre managed to present and complete. Sofia Nasta, I read the book. I had enough of time to actually read the book. I'm not an urban expert, not an architect. Uh, for me, some things are quite unclear, but what I, I was usually looking in internet, but now I definitely know that in future I want to create a public space and this will be a, a, a hotel for insects and it's it, it's it thanks to you it will happen but this is really an interesting thing there's already a question to you on social media because we are streamed on UCMC Facebook Alexander Solomashenko is asking how can you get how can, can he get the manual like in the paper format and the online electronic Today we actually plan to publish it. Uh, please check our updates on Facebook page. L you can look for it here and tomorrow on decentralization portal, GovUA, and UCMC webpage, the electronic version. The paperback, well, uh, send us a request. We'll check. Maybe we will uh, request another batch and we'll tell you where you can take it. Thank you. Another question to Anastasia and Sofia. I don't know if Sofia stays till the end, so I'll read it now because it's from social media. How can we contact with Miss Anastasia and Sofia? Uh, yeah, people are looking for your contacts. I couldn't find your Facebook page. Our charity fund, uh, the Palms of Peace, we want to implement a couple of public space projects in the occupied Kharkiv communities. Girls, how can we... Yeah, the last slide of the presentation actually has all the contact data. I uh, hope we'll publish the presentation. We're open for cooperation. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. And we move forward. We speak of the formats to engage the users to create public spaces, instruments of participatory designing. Pavlo Bilik, you say Dobre consultant. Yeah, thank you. First of all, congrats, congrats. It's a wonderful manual. As an insider, I had a chance to familiarize a little bit earlier and I uh, already managed to read it. I advise you to read it. As ladies already said, uh, in the market, we have so, so many similar publications but this one is unique it's specific because of this guideline format and uh, with other materials that you maybe do already have you you should keep it on your shelf if you're an urban expert or if you're a person who wants to keep fingers on the pulse how it's changing in your community i'm grateful to you say dobre global communities ukraine for the chance to present uh, my ideas and to be engaged in so many projects previously now I'll talk about some of these in my presentation my name is Pablo Bielik you already know that I've been in this area for more than seven years I started my career with Lviv Polytechnic uh, Polytechnic's Department of Architecture then master's degree in Paris School of Urban Studies and I spent some time in France and work there 
as you can see from my presentation, I'll talk about public spaces, the projects I was engaged in, and uh, where I uh, was a designer. And I will focus on participatory designing and engaging the uh, users. And Ben Fisheries, okay, public spaces. <coughs> so I guess this is the topic. Uh, Mostly we all understand what it is about a public space, what it is. It's not a private space, okay? It's not uh, a conservation area. It's not uh, a restricted administrative unit. So when we speak of public space, when we imagine that it's a park, square, street, it's uh, external, outdoor item but public spaces these may be libraries as well youth centers public centers and we have to we don't have to ignore these as well but usually these are taken as interior projects okay we can take all public spaces split these this is the typology it's not the exhaustive list of course this may be internal external transit uh, or nuclear depending on configuration of space. The scale is different. Homogeneous, heterogeneous, uh, in terms of the users of space, multifunctional, monofunctional, and so on. The importance to engage the users, the end users. So it's not exhaustive list, of course, but such important things that we've uh, taken from our experience. First of all, when we work with public space, let's imagine a park or like, okay, let it be a park. The planners, the urban experts have a chance to go one time, twice, three times to a spot, collect analytical data, uh, understand what the territory is, make photos and mapping. But Public spaces of that uh, type are not static. These are dynamic, just these are not like indoor ones. It changes because of the season, the time of the day, and the context is important. The context you can only get uh, from the community. They've been living there all the time. They go there all the time on the street. They can tell you something you never even see or will see. The feeling of engagement, okay, so uh, that's why it's important to engage community. It's important for people to feel that they're in the process. This project stops being a project of urban expert, but becomes a project of the community. People feel that they are a part of it. They really want to finalize it. This is about openness in front of the community. It enhances the trust. Uh, to the council, to administration, to the team of the project, and it gives a chance to directly impact the decisions under the project and the use of the local budget, because public spaces usually uh, are funded from local budget or it's about like donor money invested. A couple of projects where I was engaged. So first, the youth Space and Library Number Three in Kherson. With Anastasia together, we handled that project and uh, 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 building Ukraine together CSO. So we had uh, only basically two days and the final stage. We spent two days in Kherson. That was quite a limited duration, and we visited the spot, talking to people, working on the concept, discussing, and so on. After that, we finalized uh, the spatial materials. Two people in the team we had, me and Anastasia, we visited the spot once. We spent two days there, so it's day zero. On Friday evening, we came to Kherson. We visited the library, checked uh, all the calculations, checked the, the spot. Next day, we met with a working group. The working group consisted of visitors of the library, uh, employees, uh, Kherson activists, and uh, the locals, people living next to it, they all were interested in this project. So first of all, we had a brainstorm. 
like to understand who is the end user of this space, let's say, that we want to see there. Later, Anastasia had a presentation for the working group on the public space planning principles. These presentations should engage locals. It's important to do it in the beginning because it gives the community and end users and working groups the understanding, like, what shall we talk about? It stimulates the ideas. It inspires them to express it later because when we talk to colleagues, we, have, we all have experience. We, know, we all know the theory, you know, something we can operate. When we talk to people who face it for the first time, they need to get the theory first. And these presentations uh, are done all the time when we work with locals. Then we had content analysis of the environment. So our working groups were having a round table. We gave them questionnaires on the configuration and functions of the space, insulation, many things. And they discussed it all together. And they were uh, shaping their characteristics of this uh, premise. The day was over. Me and Anastasia, we went to design some planning solutions based on what we collected and we had the next day. We came back to that group. We offered them a couple of options that we, a couple of options for planning of space, pros and cons discussed. Actually, uh, we didn't pick any of them. We like separately, but we mixed the solutions. And uh, in the end, we got a vision. After this, we discussed the spatial model of the proposed concept, had again a discussion, and in 3D, tried to understand how the space will work and look. So we finalized the project. We did it later, as I told you. All the data collected and materials, we just... Uh, we just presented these final graphic results. Then we had the the, the Stan Town in Paris agglomeration in France. So what was the project about? How to revitalize the historical uh, part of Stan Town? Analytical advice, consulting them, and also a roadmap report that we presented in the end. Just a little bit of context. This town was in the suburbs of Paris. Agglomeration mostly there were French people living there, but uh, within the last within the last decade, the majority of dwellers are Muslims. And the historical center of the town was shaped around schools, uh, market square, library and church. So some places which become the nucleus of any town, but uh, because of these changes, and they had basically no space to build something new in this square, they had already uh, three mosques, and they built another one mm. in the suburbs, and also uh, so uh, and s and shopping malls were built as well in the suburbs. So the historicals, the historicals uh, center started losing let's say, uh, people, it has become less popular. There was another format. We had four months. We had 10 people on the team with various background. We had urban experts, ac uh, cultural experts, journalists, designers, and so on. For more than 15 times, we visited the spot. We had a chance to go there regularly and to collect data on our own. And I'll tell about this. Some interesting observations, like the square. And by the way, the planners, when they visited this spot, they not instantly can get all the information about the spot. It's next to the market zone, except on Wednesday and Saturday. The market is functioning. This is the same square when we have Wednesday and Saturday when market is functioning. Uh, this is another facade of the market. And again, 
It's Wednesday and Saturday. It's the uh, inside view. The same square I mentioned at noon when when the market doesn't work. So it's noon and 4 p.m. because it's next to school. And on the left, we can see that it looks very beautiful, a transit street with very nice greenery, but at 4 p.m. it turns into a place for people to gather without uh, equipped uh, waiting zones. We have parents sitting on flower beds or on a pedestrian uh, zone. So this space is dysfunctional. But Pablo, how much time do you need? Okay. Yeah, because other speakers are waiting for us. Yeah. So I'll be brief. One of the approaches that we used mapping of the space together with the community. So we printed the maps. We came to the market because the visitors of middle and uh, elderly age in media tech, we had younger people. We had interviews carried out in the central part of the town. And we tried to see who was using the place. How much time did they spend? We created analytical data out of this. We observed the cars, the vehicles, if the traffic is intense in the central part. And thanks to this observation, we realized that Central Street is so intense and uh, busy that it splits the historical center into two parts, it's hard to cross it. Visually, it's inconvenient to move. The projects that we managed, that we discussed with Anastasia Irex, youth spaces in uh, culture institutions in smaller communities. We studied the users, designed some solutions. Two months for this project, six members on the team into pairs and everything was purely online because we had the lockdown then uh, due to the pandemics, COVID pandemics. And the approach was like that. So we had basically not just to make a presentation together with the community, but for the community, okay, we wanted community to do it on their own and give us the information and then we shared the results. We gave a basic theoretical presentation. We sent each team an actual box with various uh, designing means, questionnaires, where they could shape the analysis of the environment, mm, different design solutions, these color circles and palettes, uh, samples of interiors, and also we printed uh, the plans of interior plans. And these uh, models made of cardboard, they could use it in, in an interactive format and to configure the, 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 the space to create a vision. A couple of photo reports, like how communities uh, managed to finalize the project. And these already are the finalized materials, 3D schemes and interior designs. The last one briefly, because you want me to stop talking, okay? The projects we have right now, not so much information. These are still not finalized. Helibotska, Nadobojevska, Novovoronsovska communities. We create concept projects of park type public spaces, outdoor ones, big ones, yeah, really big spaces. Analytical and project activity engaging communities, designing graphic concept materials, and video visualization, of course. We started doing uh, this since 2022. Now it's obligatory and community understands better how the space should look like. And we can engage donors and look for additional funding with videos because it looks really representative. For six months of duration, three mem team uh, members. We only had uh, three visits, offline design session, online sessions and discussions. These are the tools that to be used to engage people, questionnaires, working groups, online sessions with broader circles and design sessions, offline design sessions. That's how it looked. And thank you so much. Thank you, Pablo.
We will have representatives of the ministry shaping the policy from urban experts, from consultants. Uh, we want to get it. Is it enough for you? Like, is it enough of regulatory framework that we have, the applicable one? Is it enough for you to do the work that you're doing? And then we'll go to people from ministry. I'll pass the floor to Nasta uh, later. Uh, so uh, the urban design is quite a young uh, branch of science, let's say, um, especially in Ukraine. When I was a student, uh, it was not. It was for urban design and it's it more of a planning. Nothing of sociology, culturology. In foreign countries, urban design is a separate area. Multi. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary dimension already. And uh, therefore, we definitely lack this approach in our regulatory framework. But it's, it's evolving. We still have, uh, we've have very good amendments regarding inclusiveness, so we move in the proper direction. And I think everything's going to be fine in these new publications that we have. It's a great way to create a better theoretical background, something we lack, but now we have it. And we speak about uh, establishment of state policy in the area of recovery planning, cooperating with communities, and uh, coordination. Deputy Minister of Communities, Territories, and Infrastructure, Natalia Kozlovska, is with us, please. Thank you. I do, I do hope you hear me very well. Yes, we do. Colleagues, uh, greetings to everyone. Well, first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude uh, for the support, for the support provided by USAID in general and uh, USAID Dobre program in particular. They help us to plan the recovery and eliminate the consequences of Russian aggression. We do appreciate your support and help. We realize that recovery should become the background for Ukrainian communities to develop. There must be a comprehensive approach with the most innovative solutions. Last year, we introduced in legislation the so-called comprehensive recovery programs to be designed by communities and regions. Again, you say Dobre program has become the pioneer to help communities to design those documents. I'm so grateful. And to Mr. Brian, personally, and we've discussed that today. We designed methodological recommendations, and we are we have almost we're we're finalizing these for eighteen communities. It's a good benchmark, and your achievements are used by other communities and international projects. We are really interested to expand the support for other communities and to deepen the support of the project in designing the spatial development plans. We appreciate the innovative public spaces design solutions. I do hope, I, I really know it will be useful for all the communities in the re, at the recovery stage. It's important for us because we move to European integration. We are ready for further discussions at expert level on how to improve the legislation, regulatory framework when it comes to uh, planning and design of public spaces. I just want to mention separately that we launch we launch the uh, process of amending the construction standards and norms. So I want colleagues to join this process for all of us together to change the approaches uh, on how we shape the public spaces and settlements. We can see that program is capable not only of scaling and deepening. Uh, its interventions, but we can help uh, communities to coordinate and communicate with central executive power bodies. We have to exchange best practices. We have to improve our human potential and staff potential to ensure that we uh, implement our comprehensive recovery plans. We're deeply interested in implementation of the project. We're deeply interested in uh, expanding the project. I'm grateful to all the experts joining this process. 
for the public spaces and communities to be of high quality and uh, to make our communities socially oriented and economically active. We understand that our key role is to make all the approaches regarding the planning, functioning of settlements, these approaches should be human-centric. I offer you to take this as a foundation. Thank you again. Uh, I'm grateful to all of you, those helping us with the comprehensive recovery plans. Therefore, we will create the innovative public spaces and communities. Thank you, Natalia, and uh, another representative of the ministry we have. On practical aspects, he'll tell us more about it. Gregory Malnichuk, Deputy Director of Spatial Planning and Architecture Department. So please, Gregory, you're welcome. Okay. Oh, so you're you're not online but offline. I'm so happy to see you offline. So greetings, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. If I may, I have a presentation, please. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I just want to continue with what Natalia already mentioned. In practical part of building this chain from comprehensive recovery programs. Again, my big thank you to you say Dobre. Coming from these programs to planning, participation, and other stuff. So we consider all initiatives on how to improve the planning, the territorial planning. We take it as one big process because definitely when uh, the full-scale invasion started, there were questions like, what should the recovery look like? Um, what should the document be? Like, how it will be regulated? What is the general vision? Back then, uh, in spring 2022, we all came to a conclusion that this should be a comprehensive recovery. And uh, this is a continuous process of modernizing and uh, further practical integration of Ukrainian settlements in uh, European civilized community. Can we have the presentation? So when we talk about the comprehensive nature of planning, when we talk about the logical connection between comprehensive recovery programs, public space planning, and other projects to develop communities. So in our understanding, comprehensive nature, comprehensiveness as it is, it's about how you see those aspects in the planning that should be considered and understood. from the standpoint of five various uh, concepts. When we talk about program-specific projects, so such planning areas as spatial planning, economic planning, human capital development planning, transport planning as well, planning, uh, and uh, recovery, environmental recovery and resource recovery, administering as the sixth block, ensuring the actual implementation and further development. So it's really interesting from the practical standpoint that when we take public spaces, not just like architectural objects or places for people to recreate or entertain, but when we take 
public spaces, from the standpoint of local economy, uh, environmental protection, and restoring transport communication because public spaces quite often these are the places where so many people uh, meet every day they have some random interactions sometimes they can just stop elsewhere and have a cup of coffee and talk so uh, it's like a micro city concentration in urban space uh, within a small location that has so many functions. Therefore, I'd like to congratulate you with this wonderful result. And when we talk about some practical further actions, yes, as Natalia mentioned, it there will be a huge work on amending the uh, state urban planning and construction standards as it was presented previously on the slides by the manual coder, there's no one universal solution. We don't, was, we don't want this to be over-regulated, to have the, the very same standards and the same public spaces, you know. Maybe, well, we have to understand what actually hampers that process. Maybe something should be changed. And then, based on practical projects and cases, we can uh, establish the framework, not only the regulatory, but uh, create some recommendations for communities to be able to adapt to their needs uh, and at the same time to ensure this human-centric framework. Starting from the inclusiveness requirements, uh, eliminating barriers and spaces, and with uh, the opportunities provided by public spaces for people at least to communicate. Thank you. So, retrograde mercury. It's not just problems with the connection, but we also have problems with presentations. Public space concept, which is not... Uh, in our legislation still. Will it be there, the definition itself? Well, um, it depends a lot on uh, proposals to ministry, and we really encourage uh, the manual authors and the project team, please give us your proposals, give us your ideas, not to create, again, an over-regulated, uh, not to create some extra bureaucracy, please, but we really want to give some extra opportunities. At the level of comprehensive community plan, detailed territorial plan, we define that this territory, for example, is a public space and it requires some uh, separate regulation, or this is not needed. We don't want to over-regulate, but with the standards to give extra opportunities. If there is a need, we're open to any proposals. We have your presentation, but I think that you already told us everything. We'll have a release, a press release after this discussion. Uh, can we put your presentation in the release? And we'll do it. Briefly. We have this comprehensive recovery vertical setting uh, a general framework. It's more for analytical, it's an analytical, conceptual, and visionary document. And then we have comprehensive plan for spatial development, community general plan, a regulating document with certain uh, legal consequences when it comes to construction, I mean, yeah. And those five areas of planning I mentioned economy, social context, transport, environment, space, and administering. I want to draw your attention that in, in the context of recommendation preparing, in the context of regulation, uh, the context of legislative work, what should be an important part of the discussion? 
What is a public space itself? Can we take this as a certain object? Uh, uh, maintained by a certain enterprise or do we need to actually uh, put in commission after it's built like what are the rules for its maintenance to make it like actually public for people to be engaged not only in the creation when it's designed but uh, it's constant improvement in the process of maintenance. A lot of interesting questions are there, which we may discuss in an expert format. It's important not to give this abstract, not to make it overregulated, but be built purely on practical cases. Yeah. If we speak about integrated comprehensive planning and integrated impacts, we have to analyze how certain planning area impacts the other one. What is the interconnection? If you plan transport component, how it will affect environment or social communication or economy. If we want to have certain economic impact, how it impacts other areas. I think that in the context of those pilot projects introduced in the manual, I think there are so many of those aspects. And it's really good that we have uh, the local economy aspect. It's, it's presented very well. Thank you. I can see in uh, social network there's a huge demand for this manual. Everybody's asking how can we get the manual, but the printed, the printed version they want to get. So I know that ministry is doing, you meet the communities a lot and you're doing a lot. Maybe you can actually uh, transfer it to them. By the way, it's a good idea. We'll talk about that, of course. We'll coordinate the activities. Thank you, and we're moving forward. We talk about the role of locals or governance bodies in establishment of public spaces. So, communities who were partnering with you say Dobre. In Bukovina, we have one community where I've never been to, but uh, I know a lot about it, and I admire them. One of the first 159 uh, amalgamated communities in Ukraine. One of the first communities that was searching for opportunities to create new jobs, they did it. They started with this. This is one of the first communities who prioritized quality of healthcare services because they were the first who were saving people from COVID. Since February 24th, they were accepting and hosting people who were fleeing from war, still taking care of IDPs. Hlebotska community of Chernivtsi region. And it's my pleasure to pass the floor to Grigory Van Zuriak, please. Because I understand that um, you still have to think about cultural development and uh, places to communicate. Yeah, thank you for introducing us and uh, I'm so happy to be in this wonderful expert company and this wonderful expert team. I'm so happy to represent the local authorities because I'm pretty sure that after decentralization all representatives of local self-governance uh, despite the challenges we're still planning the recovery, we're planning the development through the prism of the current situation. Together with, you say, Dobre program and its experts, I will not make a mistake to say that Dobre has the best experts in Ukraine. So we managed to create mechanisms and plans for development and uh, I remember the pre-war time when we were drafting the development strategy. In this strategy, we already uh, created the foundation of spatial planning, public space development, 
and we work with that today. It's so important. It's so important to have an action plan for it. To have a concept uh, of how we move forward, what are we doing, and how are we developing. Today we have so many uh, servicemen and servicewomen uh, on duty. Many of them return back home for them, for their rehab to be uh, comprehensive. We need to, of course, provide them these opportunities. We have to look at it through the prism of reality because those people who had Afghanistan war experience, when you talk to them, talk to the veterans, uh, we know that many uh, got this natural rehab, the forest, you know, interaction with nature. So we have to create these public spaces, considering our current experience, uh, equip these, and we have to work all together. Of course, the funding is always an issue that Mr. Bryan mentioned. Campbell at the beginning, but it's not necessarily the budget funding. It can be, we can engage grants. Local business can engage, of course, and many other sources, but definitely this is something we have to work on. I'm happy that we still uh, are partners of Dobre program and grateful to Brian Campbell and Vitali, to our experts. We uh, started uh, updating and we now are actively thinking on how to design our spaces. Uh, the park in the community, because even in, in, in these conditions, you know, in this uh, situation, our people are still active. More than 150 dwellers engaged in conversation. They took part in the survey and um, many of them uh, met the designers. We did not limit it with some time. Like, uh, <laughs> they could have talked for hours. Many of them wanted to contribute in the design of the project under planning. Uh, and uh, we have a working group in the community. We have representatives of religious, even organizations, charity funds, volunteers, and uh, IDPs as well. Who ha They have their own vision of spaces in community and uh, it's it's so great you know i feel so pleased because we introduced the online project by our wonderful designers that we do have uh this this was the dream this was the dream that we had and we do understand that this dream and this plan well it will take a lot of time to implement this project and i think that it will be fully implemented um, Mm, within years, but we still need the concept for the community. Thank you, Hrehori. And uh, we also wanted to have Andrei Selecki, head of uh, Novovoronsovska military administration. But uh, we have problems with communication. He has cave star operator. Unfortunately, we can't reach him. But I just want to tell you about this person a little bit about him and what they plan to have a Dobra program. Andriy uh, Selatsky is an activist, he's a historian, a businessman, but uh, it, this whole thing was before the war. Since February 24th, a volunteer who managed to evacuate more than 1,000 people from occupied territories. He is leading the Novovoronsovska military administration. Together with dwellers with Dobre program, he wants to implement an interesting project uh, for spatial planning and development. I do hope, Andri, that when you'll uh, watch the recording of this discussion, that um, please, Andri, stay in the community. I know that you want to go to armed forces, but the community needs you, really. So. Uh, with us, we have Yulia Doliba, Head of Community Interaction Components, CSO Building Ukraine Together. 
Mm, I just want to tell you that the CSO uh, tells us that there is a window of opportunities and modern challenges. For her, it's important, and for the organization, it's important that young people who want to stay in Ukraine, for them to become active participants of recovery. Yulia, please, we'll talk about the engagement of locals and volunteer campaigns and the best practices of your CSO. Thank you so much. Greetings. Thank you so much for the invitation and congrats to colleagues for a successful launch of that important manual. I'm pretty sure this will be of great help to those who want to change Ukraine. You've mentioned a lot about us and I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I do think that Pavlo and uh, uh, Pavlo took more time because I shared my time. So please don't be harsh on him. We've been established in 2014 and it started with an initiative of our founder to restore the dwelling of his friend in eastern Ukraine. We realized back then that there was demand for it. First, we had 25 households, and we understood that Ukrainians require that type of recovery. Our mission, uh, our mission is to create an environment of responsible people, capable people, and Haines communities and youth. And we have this motto, we are building the walls, but destroying the walls between people. This is important because this is... The, one of the key focuses of the team. Our values, responsibility, we have faith in Ukraine, we value diversity and equality. People are different, people are diverse, but we all are equal still. Everybody's important and trust. The principles of our interaction, cooperating with business, communities, and authorities. Our key areas, volunteering, uh, education and youth development and community development. I'll take the third one. Camps, local campaigns, long-term volunteering, community schools. And uh, we already had one case introduced uh, about Herson space. Thank you so much. Uh, what is the camp? Seven, ten days of camp activity. We engage volunteers from all around Ukraine. So when we pick a community where we will uh, create a space or repair something, everybody who wants to engage, they do it. Youth spaces, uh, recovering the personal dwellings. People communicate, they talk to each other, and we really want these camps not just to ensure the recovery, but it's about building personal connections. And we have this educational program for people. People meet each other and just talk. This is the map of the camps. It started in 2014 in the Donetsk region. But uh, in 2023, more than 150 communities already. Last month, we finalized a project on participatory recovery where we covered 67 communities, deoccupied regions. And we are so happy that people living in those uh, hazardous conditions, they want to develop, they want to build something new, they want to grow. The results of our work. Velika Severinka, this is the official hall, official event hall. We can compare Motyzhin, the school hall, you can see it. We've managed to repair it. Lukashivka. After the full scale, after the deoccupation, this house was destroyed and we managed to recover it. We have volunteer uh, Burchik campaign. It's, it's a smaller campaign, of course. One or three day from one to three days. The local dwellers participate in it. Mm. This work f works for some small repairs. So communities can actually apply for short term projects and we help them. It's important because they familiarize with each other. And I'll tell you about one case that I was amazed with. Uh, within our last project, 
In Mojava community in Dnipropetrovsk region, they actually were equipping a space to deliver humanitarian assistance to Avdiivka IDPs. And when we had a reflection at Zoom meeting, we had representatives of the community and Avdiivka, people from Avdiivka who made cakes, brought all that to the hall, and um, we were so... Uh, that was so touching. People were just uniting. They understood each other. People from affected communities had a chance to feel a part of decision-making movement, you know, to be responsible. Participatory engagement that we've discussed, it promotes, it gives the feeling of unity, feeling of neighborhood, understanding that you can affect the decisions and you can take responsibility for it. And we created uh, this guide. It's still not published, but guide for local authorities how to engage uh, citizens. It's about local volunteering campaigns. It's a QR code. If someone has internet connection, you can actually use the QR code and engage. We always have opportunities. It's not just the camps and Burchik campaigns and trainings. Long-term volunteering from three to six months. Volunteers from one community go to another one where they help uh, to build the youth strategy on how to implement the youth uh, policies and strategies, even showing movies in small communities. Strategic. strategic sharing, exchanging opinions. My gratitude to armed forces of Ukraine. Without them, of course, we would never be able to discuss it here. My gratitude to our boys and girls. Thank you, Yulia. Inna Homerska uh, tells you, please visit Bashtanska community with your, your Bur camp. Inna, I will read all the comments, but um, go to our social network pages okay so your manual is becoming so popular now like people from Kharkiv region from so many committees ask us they really want to get manuals to give it to others i know you have partnering communities there as well yeah in Kharkiv region we are very active we help a couple of them. We provide complex support on recovery and development. And there are some communities where we provide emergency support for fast recovery after uh, Russian aggression impact. Thank you for the information. Uh, thank you for the comments under the discussion. We'll analyze this, of course, after we collect it. We will see what resources we have. We'll find a proper solution together with the ministry, of course. So uh, it's ready the Q&A uh, session and our question to you. Is it possible for local self-governance bodies to maybe for them to launch a detailed training on how to establish public spaces? Olha Bukreva asks this. Well, first of all, thank you for this information. We understand that there is a high demand. We plan to do it for partnering communities, but there is a wider demand. It's obvious. We'll try to organize that, and uh, we will inform you at our webpage. Yula. Yeah, Pavlo, I wasn't harsh about you, but I have a question to you and your colleague, Anastasia. By the way, Anastasia mentioned that not always when uh, you create a public space, not always people remember of maintenance aspect. How do you think, what should we do with this? Those who create the spaces for the spaces to develop, to evolve, to comply with the needs of people living there. OK, we have two microphones. Good. First of all, as I told, we take into consideration all that at the stage of project. Urban
but experts, yes, but local authorities. We as a team, we have the participatory approach together with administrations and community. And uh, at our meetings and sessions, we raise that. We always ask, how do you plan the implementation if these are active communities? They already, they, they start with us, yeah? And we already have this part, uh, the roadmap. Break it into stages. If this is a big, costly project, you can't uh, instantly finalize it. What should be done initially for this space to function? Become active and uh, to develop to give community a chance to move forward. Plus. We understand at the beginning, like there are some local businesses. Uh, we understand the local nuances we can use if uh, there's a local producer or if there are local craftspeople. We try to study that and to include this in the project for community, not just for community, also to support local producers and manufacturers. We try to find the balance between the cost and quality, and we give advice. In Chernivtsi region, in another community, we discussed the lighting. It's pretty simple, but it gives an understanding like how we work. So they like a certain design, but we explain them why this should not be in the project. You can replace it with an analog of another type, similar but slightly different, that it will work better because of this, 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 yeah? Providing justification. So it's always important to justify. If we ask them, are you ready to do it? but you have to know of the consequences. We can't decide it for the community, yeah? We've had so many discussions. We try to communicate uh, with community to ensure that they have the best solution identified. For community to understand what exactly are they agreeing to do. Another question, Pablo, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know that urban experts give long answers as well. Some foreign organizations that helping to create public spaces, they have this definition called power 10 plus. You must have at least 10 reasons why a person must use uh, the public space. Is this something that we use Power 10 Plus? Thank you for the question. I think that this is basically something that we both mentioned and Sophia mentioned this. It's about engagement in total, engaging the existing resource in community. When you have a business that invests in the public space, it will be interested for the space to flourish and function. When you implement the project, when you had a workshop for locals who couldn't invest, who couldn't engage even, who were not the uh, participants of the session, maybe they just came, may, maybe they were like planting trees or flowers there. These people will be interested in this space, yeah? They will visit that. And those uh, in participatory sessions who engage these, those who take part in brainstorms, this is the recipe. Uh, the more active we are in engaging the target audiences at each stage, the more successful is the project. We have something about it in the manual, the 10 plus that you mentioned. It's important for the space to be vibrant, to uh, fill it with functions. 
for these functions to comply with the context. Progressive urban experts uh, take this into consideration, and I hope that we will talk about this more. Okay, our microphone goes back to experts. I'll read the questions. Vitaly will answer. Nadia Serbulova, how to join the project? Maybe she means Dobre program. I have a wish to establish a public space in Novodaiska community, Mkhlaev region. Well, my advice, just contact with us and uh, specify your question. If a community wants to become a partner, uh, so far we work only with those we started working with two or three years ago. If we continue the program and if we pick new partners we will definitely announce officially and we'll have a competition it's not a question but i want to say that we still have many requests for the manuals and uh, ucmc team promises that after the discussion they will collect all requests and uh, pass it to you to respond and i think that if there are no questions apart from the desire to get emmanuel please briefly draw some conclusions i i, I still haven't heard why during the recovery uh, process, why public spaces are important. As a representative of Dobra program, maybe colleagues will compliment. In my opinion, why it's important. I heard that elsewhere, that we don't wait for the end of the world. We have to start doing it now, restoring the country. The first step should be taken now. We help those committees who want to do it. Those who look for opportunities, we provide support and provide consultants, financial support if we can. Life never stops. A demand for public spaces has always been there and uh, it will, will always be there. Requirements to public spaces become higher. It must be inclusive, it must be burialless, it must be environmentally friendly. Before we, before you buy bricks, plan the space together with experts, not just the experts to do it alone and give you a report. Just be a part of this because you will use the space later. Your families, your kids, your guests, your visitors. So uh, I want to express my gratitude to UCMC for organizing this event. And of course, I'm grateful to all the speakers who were able to engage offline and online. Thank you so much. Maybe you want to say something. Public space is a part of economy, community economy. Economy, even at wartime, is of huge importance because this is our support to our defenders, those fighting for us, for every inch of our land, so um, economically, and volunteer support, building these bridges between volunteers, supporting the vo bridges between volunteers and defenders, it's important. So public spaces as a part of economy and future development is crucial. Thank you. Maybe, Yulia, you want to add something on Rehori? We heard human-centric today for so many times. Public space is about this. People gather there, they interact, they meet each other, they create community, they create capacity. Ukraine is built of communities. So, as my colleague said, 
it's an economic factor and it's about development. People make it for people. This is the most important value of the public space. Rehori, I just want to encourage communities to start understanding that public spaces, it's not about just spending money. It's not about spending money on bricks, concrete, benches, whatever. Public space, it's about investing resources, not necessarily the financial resources. Investing resources in opportunities you'll get later. For me, this should be the key idea. This is an integral part of the recovery. Because we don't just rebuild something that was destroyed. We have to build back better to create innovative spaces and settlements. Where people really want to live, where people want to return, where they want to raise their family, their kids. And this is, this is what Ukraine is. Thank you so much. And I'll remind you that today we talked about communities and innovative public spaces to be established by them. If we try to compress our conversation uh, when we plan the recovery of the territory, please remember, you need public spaces. It's obligatory. Engage locals. Ask them what they need. And together with them, you have to implement the projects. Remember, public space is not just an object uh, that you build and forget about them. They constantly evolve, they constantly develop. Dobre program is there for you. Use the manual and even make it better. I do hope that was useful and uh, have a nice and safe evening. Thank you.